This clip is brought to you by SaveWithConrad.com. Uh, we would see more promos, of course, but Tully and Arn are going to team up with JJ in their corner to take on Mitch Snow and Larry Stevens. Tully gets the win on Stevens with the slingshot suplex. Do either of those names ring a bell to you, Mitch Snow or Larry Stevens? I'm better on faces than I am on names. <clears throat> Larry Stevens seems to ring a bell. Uh, but got to remember, man, how many years ago has that been? Oh, uh, 35? Yeah. Long time ago. I mean, I'm a little bit better, you know, on, if I see a guy, well, I recognize a guy, I remember him really bad on names. Um, doubling back before we get to this match, though, I think we should probably say on the Bob and Tim Horner match. Yeah. If you go back and look at that, I guarantee you Tim Horner was in there doing everything he could to make Luger Godzilla, and that should mm. be commended. We should uh, look at that as being such an asset to the territory. At that time, we had so many Brad, Tim Warner type performers, Denny Browns, just just guys that could really go, but were positioned first and second match, and they really should have a pat on the ass. Absolutely. Trained by the Briscoes. Uh, he's only 62 years old now. It's crazy to think about that. Tim Horner seems like a name from three generations ago. He's actually younger than Sting. I mean, that just really puts into context what Sting is doing, but I totally agree with you. Tim Horner, I think, is uh, what folks in your day may have referred to as a great mechanic. Is that fair to say? Hell of a hand was the exact terminology. And a lot of people, you know, <clears throat> as the business evolved, and, you know, they looked at that as almost uh, a negative. You know, if you were called, hey, he's a hell of a hand, that meant you were going to go out and get everybody else over you're a star maker, not a star. And that's what, it, it's a shame that it evolved into that because originally that's all it meant. When they said he's a hell of a hand, it meant the guy could go out there with anybody or anything and have a match. And that's who Tim Warner was. He was one of those. Brad, same thing. I, I want to mention too, you know, from a promoter standpoint, and Lord knows I've never been a wrestling promoter, and, and I don't guess you've ever really promoted shows either, but you need, I mean, listen, the stars are going to come and go. You're going to, you're going to get them over. You're going to get them in a hot angle. And then sometimes they're going to move on, but you've got to have a set of reliable guys who, you know, are going to make sure the fans keep coming back. And a guy like Tim Horner is just as important and arguably more important than whoever they think they're buying a ticket to see. Fair enough. Fair enough. The main event that night is uh, Ric Flair defending his uh, world title against Barry Windham, and they go to a 30-minute mark here. So you're getting some really good matches at the live events. The next night, we're going to have a bit of a repeat. Uh, we're going to have uh, a show in Greenville, South Carolina on March 2nd at the Memorial Auditorium. Uh, it'll be, once again, you teaming up with Lex to take on Tim Horner and uh, Bob Armstrong. What's interesting about this one, we do tweak the main event just a little bit, and we get Ric Flair versus Barry Windham in a two-out-of-three falls match. We get a singles match with Dusty and Ivan Koloff, which goes back, I mean, I don't know, to Madison Square Garden way back when. Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you get a notice anytime we upload some new content. And go save yourself some money right now. If you're in a 30-year loan or you have credit card debt, it's not a matter of if I can save you money. It's a matter of how much. Find out right now for free at SaveWithConrad.com.